Well, thank all of you for being with us again tonight in Life Groups. Before we begin, just let me say how great it was to see all of you at church this past Sunday. And while we're still not back to normal, we're looking forward to seeing you again this Sunday. Now, our nine o'clock service will be the main service this Sunday, and our 11 o'clock service will be our graduation service. We're going to honor all of our graduates. Now, you're welcome to attend one or both. We will be streaming both the nine o'clock and the 11 o'clock service online. As a precaution, our teams will be sure to wipe down all touch surfaces between the two church services. Now, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call our church office. The number is 337-786-4740. Now, we have been in a series this month called Church in Isolation. And tonight what we're going to talk about is isolation from hope. And our scripture text is found in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 18. And the main point of our lesson is God meets us in the valleys of life, even when all hope seems lost. Now before we begin, take a couple of minutes and discuss the icebreaker questions. Now, Elijah experienced a literal mountaintop experience in 1 Kings chapter 18, followed suddenly by a valley experience in which he felt tired, depressed, and alone. King Ahab, influenced by his evil wife Jezebel, had led Israel into idolatry. And yet, just before the events of chapter 19, The power of God had come upon Elijah in an amazing way. In a contest with the false prophets of Baal, Elijah demonstrated God's superiority, resulting in the execution of all the false prophets. After a long drought, God sent rain in response to Elijah's prayer. And finally, Elijah was empowered by God's Spirit to outrun the king's chariots. The temptation was, though, for him to feel alone, afraid, depressed, and that his efforts were in vain. It was very overwhelming for Elijah. And during this valley experience, Elijah chose to simply run away. Elijah probably expected to return to Jezreel, as a victorious prophet, but Jezebel's message crushed his joyful celebration. He was also thinking that the people would probably leave Baal worship and return to worshiping the one true God because of this mighty display of God's power on this mountain experience. But as you continue to read, you find out that they didn't do that. And so Elijah's flight might have indicated a lack of strength to continue to fight against Baalism and Jezebel, or a lack of faith even in God's ability to protect him from Jezebel. So his victory, in his mind at least, had turned into defeat. Now, I'd like for you to take a few moments and read 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 8, and then ask the following questions. To say there are different ways of responding to bad news is not to say that there are no wrong ways to respond to difficult circumstances. 
Obviously, in this case, Jezebel wanted to hunt Elijah down and kill him. Of course, that was a wrong response. However, it is important for us to realize that we all respond differently at times to difficulty. Elijah was depressed and ready to give up in this situation, though he had responded differently in previous difficult situations that have that could have been equally depressing, according to 1 Kings 17 through 18. Now, sometimes we may think biblical figures do not experience the same problems we do, such as Job and Moses and David and Jeremiah and Elijah. These men and women of the faith, they were not super, they were not superhuman, they were not superheroes, so to speak. They wrestled with temptation. They experienced failure. They felt fear and struggled with depression, as all of us do at times. This shows, however, that God can use ordinary people, just like me and you, in wonderful ways, just as he did Elijah. Now, ask a volunteer to read 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 18, and then... Ask the following questions. In verses 11 through 13, God first revealed his presence to Elijah in his greatness and power. But note that God did not speak from that position. The Lord instead spoke to Elijah in a soft whisper, allowing himself to be a God who communicates through a still, small voice, as well as displays of power. In verse 15 and 18, God gives Elijah specific tasks to do. In verses 15 through 16, God commands first pointed to judgment. Elijah was to anoint Hazael as king over Aram, and Jehu as king of Israel, and Elisha as his own successor. The command in verse 17 indicates the extent of God's judgment, death at the hands of Ahazael, death at the hands of Jehu, and death even at the hands of Elisha through his pronouncements of judgment. God was still in control, a fact that reassured Elijah, who once in despair had felt like nothing was in control anymore. Now here's what I've learned, and as I read through this all over again, looking at Elijah, You know, when we allow threats to intimidate our faith, such as the threat of Jezebel against Elijah, we we cannot see how God can help us. And then fear begins to overwhelm us. And yet God's words to Elijah reminded him of his call to serve as God's prophet. And it also reminded him of God's sovereign control over the events of his life. The second part of God's response gave hope. God still had 7,000 people through whom he could work in the future. Now I want you to pause the video and ask the following questions. Now we're going to take some time and apply the truths from the scripture to our lives. Did you know that in the United States, people can feel isolated even in a room full of people? Isolation and depression are real issues that people struggle with as they strive for genuine human connection. As a church body, we want to help people connect to God and others to help free them from the bonds 
of isolation and depression. As you think about this, pause the video and take a few moments to answer the following questions. And once again, TPC and all of you that are listening, thank you for joining us tonight. And we pray that this lesson has added value to your life. It's a great lesson. And what we want to do now is we just want to end our time together with prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for being an ever-present help in our times of struggle. Lord, even when we face, Lord, loneliness and isolation, and yes, even depression. Lord, we just want to be reminded, even when circumstances of, of our life may tempt us to believe otherwise, it may tempt us to, to think that you're not there, but we know your word tells us, Lord, that you never leave us, you never forsake us. And so we acknowledge that, Lord, you know our situation, and you are working to make everything work for our good and for your glory. And God, we give you praise for that. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. God bless you.